sweep representation sweep volume sweeping a 2d area along a trajectory creates a new 3d object now sweep representation is used for axisymmetric objects as well as objects with uniform cross section now here this one is a axisymmetric from axisymmetric you have a 2d area that is swept you get a sweep representation now the different types of sweep representations are translation sweep tapered sweep slanted sweep rotation sweep then general sweep in translation sweep what happens is that 2d area is swept along a linear trajectory normal to a 2d plane that is a 2d area and this 2d area is swept along a normal to the 2d plane and we get a regular shape now this one is next one is a tapered shape here scale area while sweeping here what happens is that we have a regular 2d cross sectional area and sweep happens perpendicular to the 2d plane but the taper happens in a sorry the sweeping happens in a tapered manner the next one is a slanted sweep in slanted sweep the trajectory is not normal to the 2d plane that is the 2d plane is there and the trajectory through which the sweep taken take place is not to the normal to the 2d plane now next one is a rotational sweep in rotational sweep the 2d area is rotated about an axis that means you have a circular or a, a rectangular or a square or a regular 2d area that is rotated about an axis and axisymmetric objects can be easily created the last one is general sweep the object swept along any trajectory and transformed along the sweep that means any general uh, trajectory path through which the sweep happens so sweep representation uh, there is translational and rotational sweep volumes so sweep representation is an alternative way to represent a 3d object the idea behind the sweep representation is that we have a given primitive we have a sweep that may be a linear one or a curve one and define the solid as space swept by out the primitive cell decomposition this scheme follows from the combinatoric description of solids a solid can be represented by its decomposition into several cells spatial occupancy enumeration schemes are a particular case of cell decompositions where all the cells are cubical and lie in a regular grid cell decompositions provide convenient ways for computing certain topological properties of the solids such as connectedness and genus cell decompositions in the form of triangulations are the representations used in 3d finite elements for the numerical solutions of partial differential equations now cell decomposition is another form of solid modeling in which the objects are representation represented as a collection of arbitrarily shaped 3d primitives the individual cells can be defined as a set of parametrized cells which can have even curved boundary surfaces in cell decomposition there is a set of primitive cells parametrized now they differ from instant primitives by admitting the composition of more complex objects from other already established now it is a gluing operation it is a union of cells that do not intersect now let us see the primitive cells to transform in the figure a we have two basic primitives given here now the figure b and c are the final object created with different combinations now it is a kind of a gluing operation that is it consists of a single operation glue which restricts the cell to be non intersecting it does not intersect which means adjoining cells may touch each other but do not share any interior points by joining the simple cells using the glue operator or the union complex solids can be easily modeled complex solids like this can be easily modeled this modeling is easy but due to a single operator the single operator is a union operator sometimes it becomes tedious cell decomposition is not 
as versatile as constructive solid geometry. Now, for finite element mesh generation, this process is usually used. Spatial occupancy enumeration. This scheme is essentially a list of spatial cells occupied by the solid. The cells, also called walk cells, are cubes of a fixed size and are arranged in a fixed spatial grid. Each cell may be represented by the coordinates of a single point, such as the cell's centroid. Usually, a specific scanning order is imposed and the corresponding ordered set of coordinates is called a spatial array. However, they represent coarse approximations of parts and can be used to improve the performance of geometric algorithms, especially when used in conjunction with the other representations such as constructive solid geometry. This scheme is based on the notion of families of objects, each member of a family distinguishable from other by a few parameters. Each object family is called a generic primitive and individual objects within a family are called primitive instances. For example, a family of bowls is a generic primitive and a single bowl specified by a particular set of parameters is called primitive instance. The distinguishing character, characteristic of pure parametrized instancing scheme is a lack of means for combining instances to create new structures which represent new and more complex objects. Spatial occupancy enumeration is a special case of cell decomposition in which solids is decomposed into identical cells which are arranged in a fixed regular grid. These cells are known as oak cells which means volume elements. Cubic type of cells are most common and these representations of space as a regular array of cubes is called as cuberyl. When an object is represented by using spatial occupancy enumeration, only the presence or absence of a single cell at each position in the grid is controlled by us. We need only to decide which cells is occupied and which are not rep are not to represent an object. Thus, by an unique and unambiguous list of occupied cells, the object can be encoded. Finding out whether a cell is inside or outside of the solid and determining whether two objects are adjacent or not is very simple. Now here we see a torus being represented by spatial occupancy enumeration. It is unique unambiguous but approximate. Now in biomedical applications to represent volumetric data obtained from source such as computerized axial tomography that is the CAT scans, this kind of spatial occupancy enumeration is often used. Pure primitive instancing. Pure primitive instancing this scheme is based on the notion of families of objects, each member of a family distinguishable from other by a few parameters. Each family, each object family is called a generic primitive and individual objects within a family are called primitive instances. For example, a family of bold is a generic primitive and a single bold specified by a particular set of parameter is called a primitive instance. The distinguishing characteristic of pure parametrized instancing scheme is a lack of means for combining instances to create new structures which represent new and more complex objects. Let me make you more clear. When we make a solid model assembly, for example, we are just taking the case of a engine cylinder block assembly. So the engine cylinder block assembly is fixed to the engine by means of nuts and bolts. So while modeling, we may require the same type of nut and bolt in plenty of numbers. So we need not model each and every time, rather we have some kind of generic primitives and these generic primitives will be given certain parameters 
to make it a primitive instance. Now this scheme of using a generic primitive for a particular instance is called pure primitive instancing. Now coming to the last topic of this module that is a coordinate system, we have mainly three kinds of coordinate system that is model coordinate system or world coordinate system, then working coordinate system or user coordinate system and the last one is screen coordinate system. Now in model coordinate system, it is the reference space of the model with respect to all the model geometrical data is stored. Now, in a working coordinate system, is a convenient user-defined system that facilitates the geometric construction. And the last one, the screen coordinate system, is a two-dimensional device-dependent coordinate system whose origin is usually located at the lower left corner of the graphic display. Now, in a model coordinate system, is the only coordinate system that software recognizes when storing or retrieving geometric information in or from a model database. Now if you see the model coordinate system usually an XY plane is defined in a model top view. The XY plane that is conventionally taken as the top view. Now next one is a working coordinate system or the user coordinate system and in user coordinate system the user can define the coordinate system. The software calculates the corresponding homogeneous transformation matrix between world coordinate system and, mod mod and model coordinate system to convert the input into coordinates relative to the model coordinate system before sorting them into the database. That means for the easiness of working, the designer or the draftsman can set a particular coordinate system based on his work. So that coordinate system is called the working coordinate system. and the system takes the working coordinate system in relation with the model coordinate system or the world coordinate system that is already preset. Okay, now here if you see here in the XY plane, so this is the X, Y and Z plane, this is the model coordinate system. Suppose the user defines this XY plane to be the top view of the geometric model, that, that view is the or that coordinate system is the world as uh, working coordinate system or the user coordinate system but the usual model coordinate system among the model coordinate system there will be a relationship between the user set coordinate system that is the xy plane as a model top view now whenever whatever designer makes that has a relationship with the model coordinate system and it will be taken into consideration now the last one is the screen coordinate system or the device coordinate system. It is so simple that is it starts from the 0, 0 of the left bottom origin. Now this can be prominently seen in an AutoCAD open uh, database when you open it. That is a 0, 0 at the left end. Why solid modeling? Solid modeling forms the basis of computer aided design computer-aided manufacturing, computer-aided process planning, computer-aided quality control, computer-aided engineering, and ultimately computer-integrated manufacturing. Now, by using a solid model, we can directly transfer the solid model data to the process planning, which is an intermediate step of the real-time manufacturing. Now, the process planning can give abundant information which was earlier created manually from the database of a 3D model directly for the production to be planned, directly the process planning, then the tooling requirements, the tooling up, then material purchase, material order and obviously for the high-tech manufacturing or advanced manufacturing it can directly create or generate programming, NC programming, CNC programming. Now with all these advantages and direct link, the data from the 3D model or the design is directly transferred to the production center without any loss of data. Now whatever things are being produced in the production center is assembled and sent for computer aided quality control. 
now after that even the shipping can also be computerized so in order to achieve computer integrated manufacturing in today's competitive world 3d model forms a base so that is the requirement of why solid modeling is required so solid modeling is a basis of computer aided design which can be given an extension towards computer aided manufacturing computer aided analysis computer aided process planning computer aided production planning computer aided tool design computer aided procurement computer aided quality control etc